Hi, welcome to today's Piece of Peace. Quite a bit to cover today. So I'm uh, diving in here with uh, our mindset of gratitude and the top 10 things that we have thankfulness, that bring us peace, that bring us joy, that we have gratitude for. Brings our blood pressure down, brings our heart rate down, calms our spirit, brings us peace. And today I started off, um, just a really poignant piece that I took out of our pastor's sermon yesterday. <clears throat> and he was speaking and sort of referring to a book by Paul Miller called Prayer. And, I, and he brought up an illustration, like when you're getting in your quiet time with God and you're trying to read the Bible and then your mind's going in a hundred different directions. And, and in the past, I could have thought, why can't I just stay focused? Um, but his charge yesterday and um, Paul Miller's charge was this. What if it was the Holy Spirit directing you to pray for the very thing that was coming to your mind? Prayer. Prayer is key in this season. More so than ever, actually. Um, so this morning, as I started getting, even I was just, <laughs> I started getting into, to start writing my gratitude and my mind's going in several different directions. And then I thanked God. I said, thank you um, for the practice of taking where my wandering mind is going um, in my time with God and trusting the Holy Spirit is taking me there to pray about the situation that brings me back to the place of peace as I leave that situation in God's capable hands. So as my mind wandered today, I just sort of thought, okay, why is this coming to my mind? So then I'd pray around that issue or whatever happened and what I was thinking about and then come back to God again. And then it was just very neat because there was a, a just a couple different times during you know, writing out, reading my word, writing out um, what he was teaching me. And, and I had to go, okay, if you're bringing my thought here, then maybe there's some, something unresolved and let me pray for it. So taking that time, taking that opportunity to bring in more prayer, very great. And um, so those were my first two gratitudes. And my third was huge. And I can't, I can't recommend this enough. For those of you who are watching, I think it's imperative that um, you tune into Ricky Pino and Todd White's. It's a prophetic worship intensive, and it is powerful, and it is going to change the world. I'm not kidding at all. I'm super, super excited about it. Um, God's spirit was just pouring out. It started yesterday. You're not too late. It goes through Thursday. Google Rick Pino, P-I-N-O, and the worship five-day prophetic worship intensive. I'm sure you're going to find a ton of prophetic worship stuff out there, but go for Rick Pino and Todd White and sign up today. And it it runs at 1 o'clock Central Standard Time um, every day now. And it doesn't take hours. It's about a couple hours long, but you can... Um, if you're working during the day, you can pull it back up in the evening because it, it's being offered through the 27th. But I would highly advise those of you who have the afternoons to tune in because it's incredibly powerful. And it is going to change our world. It's going to change our world. Um, so there is a perspective as, as worshipers. We're actually coming in into agreement with God on many levels of the his reality his world his thoughts his word um and and in that piece is um giving us the opportunity to bring on earth as it is in heaven in agreement with god i i can't recommend it enough i wish i could stand with a bullhorn and go everybody please please experience this so I, my gratitude was lying in most of that the rest of the time. Experiencing your presence during the Worship Prophetic um, Conference teaching of Rick Pino is amazing. Thank you. The desire to learn and lead more prophetically in worship. Um, and then talking about it to some friends yesterday. Just gratitude. Other worshipers. Other people who are leading in worship bands. Those who are musicians. Those who are vocalists. Anybody. You don't have to be on a worship team to, to gain the benefit of this. Because your worship... 
even as someone who's in a congregation, um, is huge and important and, and part of this. So um, a big part of it. Uh, anyway, I can't, I'm passionate about it right now because it is super powerful. Um, I was had gratitude that my day was filled with worship and great teaching yesterday. Um, I had gratitude that my time with him um, is when it's still quiet in the morning. I have family day today. I'm so happy and excited about that and his peace. Saying happy birthday to my brother and a friend, just writing that out. And, um, and then I kept track of where I trailed that this morning and and what I prayed about so that was just interesting and um, that brought me into our devotion which we're going to dive into now which is um, our daily bread download that app or order these booklets online we're going to be in first Peter 1 it's highlighted for 6 through 9 but I, I need to do a I need to do sort of a, a, a backdrop to it on why it starts off in this you greatly rejoice what is in this so when I see that I'm going to go back and figure out why in this so um, this is written out by Linda Washington and she titles it refined in the fire and I'm gonna start now just in first Peter um, um, 1 3 through 9 is what I'm gonna read so praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A resurrection from the dead. And into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power. And I want to repeat that. You, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had, had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even through the, ref which, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. In her devotion reads, 24 karat gold is nearly 100% gold with few impurities. But the percentage is difficult to achieve and refiners most commonly use one of two methods for the purification process. The Miller process is the quickest and least expensive, but the resulting gold is only about 99.95% pure. Um, the Wolwell gold process takes a little more time and costs more, but the gold produced is 99.99% pure. In Bible times, refiners used fire as a gold purifier. Fire caused impurities to rise to the surface for easier removal. In his first letter to believers, in, G, in his first letter to believers in, G, in Jesus throughout Minor Asia, north of Turkey, northern Turkey, the apostle Peter used the gold refining process as a metaphor for the way trials work in the life of a believer. At that time, many believers were being persecuted by the Romans for their faith in Christ. Peter knew what that was like firsthand. But persecution, Peter explained, brings out the genuineness of our faith. Perhaps you feel like you're in a refiner's fire. Feeling that heat of setback, illness, or challenges but hardship is often the process by which God purifies the gold of our faith. In our pain, we might beg God to quickly end the process, but he knows what's best for us, even when life hurts. Keep connected to the Savior, seeking his comfort and his peace. Linda's charge to us was this, what challenges have you faced that led you to your growth? How did you respond to them? 
And her prayer is, Father God, help me see how the trials of my life bring out the gold in me. I can think back of numerous times when things were rougher than they even are today. And um, for in, in my personal life and um, not in the world. But, and I remember the glory he brought and the refining he brought and how my faith deepened and was rock solid in it. Not without pain and not without trial. And in this season, we have a ton going on. Just a ton. And how is he going to use the, how is he going to use all this to refine us? His church, his people. How is he going to use this time to refine us? To raise us up, to have our faith be rock solid. Seek out that worship in intensive. It's going to speak a lot into this, even what we're learning right now. And that brings me to um, Jesus Calling, Sarah Young's book. You can download her app. You can order this book online. She writes from the perspective of God speaking to us. Find me in the midst of the meal storm. Sometimes events whirl around you so quickly that they become a blur. Whisper my name in recognition that I am still with you. Without skipping a beat in the activities that occupy, occupy you, find strength and peace through praying my name. Later, when the happenings have run their course, you can talk with me more fully. Accept each day just as it comes to you. Do not waste your time and energy wishing for a different set of circumstances. Instead, trust me enough to yield to my design and purpose. Remember that nothing can separate you from my loving presence. You are mine. That is today's piece of peace. God bless you.